good morning i welcome you all to discuss a topic viruses worms and other malwares of all malware types worms and viruses have received a maximum attention the both of these malwares that replicate themselves this is what is a speciality of viruses and worms viruses latches itself to an exe file or program while worms typically a standalone programs a virus infects a file and uses it as a host from which to infect the other files while worms spreads from computer to computer so because of these qualities spreading rate of viruses is lower compared to the worms there are no universally agreed definitions for worms and viruses for example email worms say the gray area between worms and viruses on the other hand like more typical worms they propagate over a network such as internet on the other hand they share a virus characteristics in that many of them are activated by human action such as clicking on the uh, attachment or link a trojan horse or simply trojan is a program with a malicious component disguising as a useful piece of software unlike viruses or worms they do not replicate trojan is typically activated by action on the part of the victim they can enter a system in several ways through email attachment through file sharing software from website or through cell phone downloads next we will talk regarding the features of worms and viruses first we will start our discussion from virus characteristics when virus infected a program in a run the virus code is executed first one of the task that virus code is to seek other programs not at infected something like a corona virus where the infected file will spread this virus to a other files which are not infected and then these viruses may perform an action such as deleting the certain files in olden days virus code is to be located at the start of the infected file but today virus code need not to be located at the start of the infected infected file in some cases virus code is both prepended and appended to the host file virus code could not be split uh, i mean virus code could be split into a several segments and interspread throughout the infected file using jump segments at the end of each virus segment so by doing so viruses disguise themselves so that the antivirus software should not detect these viruses but in all these cases the size of the infected program is larger than the original host program this helps antivirus softwares to detect the infected code to escape from detection some viruses modify the file service interrupt handler that returns attributes of the file by so doing the service handler may be programmed to return the uninfected length of the file so this helps a virus to escape from antivirus softwares another technique is the compress the infected file so that 
the length of the infected file go will going to remain same as that of the original file. To infect the file, the virus first compresses that file and then prepends the virus code to the compressed file. The infected file must be uncompressed just prior to the execution. One of the characteristic features of many viruses is the set of system calls they make. As you know that system calls are used by application programs to request the services of operating system. They are made to read write files, establish TCP, TCP connections etc. Some viruses make calls to copy their own code to the other files create modify entries in the windows registry or search for uh, email such as suspicious calls are often used to distinguish malicious from from begin the code next we will going to discuss regarding worms characteristics say in this title we are going to discuss regarding classes and features of worms. Worms are mostly classified based on on the way in which they propagate. So that is the vector of propagation. The main categories of worms based on the way in which they propagate are given over here. That is inter internet scanning worms, email worms, P2P worms, web worms and mobile worms. Next we will discuss regarding the features of worms. In that first the enhanced targeting. The most important attribute of the worm is that it spreads its infection to other computers. But how does worm know who is the target next? There are different ways by which worm will going to detect its target. Some of such examples. Worms that spread through email for example have an easy way to find its targets. All they need to do is look into the victim's mailbox or email address book to find a set of targets. A mobile worm obtains the phone numbers of its potential victims from the bo phone book in the cell phone <coughs> some web worms use search engines to find the vulnerable targets internet scanning worms on the other hand scan IP address space for vulnerable machines the most straightforward approach is random scanning choosing IP addresses at random this was adopted by code red version 1 why uh, uh, this uh, worms however code red version 2 adopted localized scanning for 80 percent of the time it attempted to connect to a victim with whom it shared the network address this strategy was more successful since hosts in the same network are likely to be closer and be running the same software. Worms like Nimda propagate through HTTP and email. Apart from that, they also say use a technique of spreading through file sharing features of some operating systems. Next feature of the worm is enhanced speed to enhance the infection rate some worms are designed say to create a multiple threads of the worms and each thread is responsible for setting up of connection to a different subset of hosts thus increasing the rate at which the infection is spreads some worms reduce the infection latency by targeting buffer overflow vulnerability on an application that uses UDP rather than TCP. This is mainly because TCP connection establishment involves 
थ्री वे हैंडशेक एंड टाइम कंज्यूमिंग यू डी पी बाई कॉन्ट्रास्ट इज कनेक्शन लेस दिस इज दिस रिड्यूस द इन्फेक्शन लेटेंसी टू इंक्रीज वर्म स्प्रेड प्रपकेशन रेट अटैकर क्रिएट्स अ लिस्ट ऑफ वनरेबल मशीन ही हैंड्स ओवर दैट लिस्ट टू द फर्स्ट वर्म्स एंड वंस इट इन्फेक्ट्स द मशीन दिस वर्म स्प्लिट्स द लिस्ट बिटवीन इट सेल्फ एंड द मशीन इट हैज इन्फेक्टेड एंड दिस एक्शन repeats with every new machine gets infected so by doing so the speed at which the worm spread will increase next feature of a worm is enhanced capabilities most worms have unique and distinct signatures so which appear in all instances of the worms worms and viruses signatures are the key to detect them however there are sophisticated code say hiding techniques to evade the detection one such technique is use use of encryption for disguising a worm code different instances of the worms may use different keys for encryption thus they might fail to match any existing worm signature such a worms are said to be polymorphic a polymorphic worm would have to be decrypted before being executed this suggests that a decryptor routine in the clear would have to be a part of the worm code the decryptor routine used to decrypt the worms are very simple so this characteristics of decryptor routine sometimes used to detect the worm but this is not that successful method the another way of a uh, creation of say uh, another way of hiding the worms is creation of several code codes of uh, creation of several code versions that are superficially different but functionally identical this trick trick creates multiple versions of worms some of such tricks are adding no operation instruction in the code so these no operation instruction will not affect the program logic say apart from that changing the flow control without disturbing the existing logic this is also one of the trick and use of say some additional operands which again will not going to affect the outcome of the program next feature of a worm is enhanced destructive power it is estimated that worms it is estimated that worms such as code red and nimda cost billions of dollars in damage however the estimation of analysis of this loss is based on lost productivity cleanup costs and the system downtime which affects the business and revenues fast spreading worms also caused severe network congestion problem disturbing the normal internet traffic and contributing to the system downtime the harms caused by worms is also measured by loss of productivity and system crashes there are more uh, sinister and subtle goals such as stealing of sensitive personal informations and corporate informations which could remain undetected next we will go to discuss regarding one worm that is internet scanning worms
the internet scanning worms are self activating type the ability to spread without human intervention and they form uh, uh, they most of the times they propagate through emails or peer to peer networks or through website the speciality of this internet scanning worms is that say most of the times they try to find vulnerable machines by scanning internet these worms spread through a standard protocol such as tcp and udp once they get installed on the victims machine with the help of such protocols they in fact and even they erase a local files steal secrets or say uh, defame the web pages but the new victims that apart from that they will also try to look for the new victim the major intention of such worms is to spread as early as possible to a different machines next we'll discuss two case studies of such internet scanning worms one first we'll start with the code red one of the best known examples of internet scanning worms is code red worm so this was very popular because of its destructive power we first describe this worm and then we'll talk regarding slammer worm so in 2001 when buffer overflow vulnerability was discovered in microsoft internet information services web server that is iis web server so internet information services is extensible web server software created by the microsoft for use with windows and nt family so the vulnerab vulnerability that is noticed with this iis web server so was used by this code red worm the vulnerability that is noticed with iis web server is buffer over overflow vulnerability this characteristics this uh, vulnerability was used by code red to disturb the services of microsoft web servers because of which it has say gained lot of attention and later on a patch for this vulnerability was developed a few days later it is estimated that there are there were several millions of is servers in in active development which were affected by this this worm affected all such web servers through http request message the first version of the worm was used a random number generator to generate a new address of the ma machines to infect however the same seed was used for the random number generator in every instance of the worm this resulted in in the same machine being infected over and over again the new version of this code red which was launched in 2001 overcome this particular problem so where the random seed was generated in the worm started generating new random numbers this had a dramatic effect on the worm propagation so within uh, just a 14 hours time it affected 3 lakh 60 thousand machines it continues that its journey and by the within 9 days time it also attack on the server of white house so this has they also defaced the web pages 
with the phrase hacked by Chinese. Later, patch was developed for code red one version and immediately a few months time code red 2 was released code red installed a backdoor providing an attacker a remote administrative level access to the victim unlike the code red 1 which was a memory resident and was destroyed by rebooting the system the code red 2 persisted on the disk this generates several hundreds of threads. Each thread sent a probe packets to a several victim targets. Unlike code red one, only about 12% of the addresses it generated were random and rest were biased towards the machines within its own subnet. Next one is about slammer. The slammer the SQL slammer was launched in 20, on 25th January 2003 and this too is targeted the buffer overflow vulnerability on Microsoft, Microsoft SQL Server 2000. The worm sent a packets on UDP port 1434, the database software resolution services. It used a simple random scanning to propagate. The slammer was designated, designed to erase the files, install backdoors, etc. Nevertheless, because of considerable traffic it generated, it severely disrupted internet traffic. Because of this worm, many switches and routers are crashed. Next, we will talk regarding worm propagation model. This topic we will discuss it in the next class. Thank you.